Good afternoon. Welcome to St. George Church for the celebration of the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. The celebrant is today is Father Paul, assisted by Deacon Greg. <coughs> the Mass intentions are for Cynthia Aguilar, Vera Bayer, and Wesley Anderson. Announcement for 4 p.m., 7.30 a.m., and 9.30 a.m. only. Parish registration takes place this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. in the Cahill Parish Life Center in Meeting Room 1. Lent begins this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. Ashes are distributed at the 815 Mass and the 615 Evening Mass. There is also a 3.30 p.m. prayer service with distribution of ashes. Little Black Books are available at church entrance along with the CRS Rice Bowl, our Lenten almsgiving program. Join us for Stations of the Cross every Friday during Lent at 7 p.m. If you ordered Peshki, Peshkis. Punchki. Punchki. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, pick, pick up is this Sunday morning in the Parish Life Center. The Parish Office will be closed Friday for a staff retreat. Next weekend, St. George Pro Life is sponsoring Latin Prayers for Life featuring a variety, a variety of prayer cards. These prayer cards will be available at the exits of the church. Next weekend, there will be a special second collection to help defray the costs of our teen mission trip. Boy Scouts of America Troop 385 is hosting all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast next weekend in O'Connor Hall. And as always, please silence all cell phones and stand and greet one another in the Lord with a friendly greeting to those around you. Please join in our opening hymn, Praise to the Lord, number 207 in your books, number 207. to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is your help and salvation. Come, all you here, now to his altar draw near, joining in glad Praise to the Lord who shall prosper our work and defend us. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend us. Ponder what the Almighty can do, who with his love will be Good afternoon, St. George. Good afternoon. We come together and pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today's gospel, we hear some very, very familiar phrases. And the problem with familiar phrases is they can become cliches. And when they become cliches, they start to lose their impact. They start to lose their meaning. And yet these words that we're going to hear today are words that we know we have to live by. We're called to live by them. So we're going to talk about some very concrete ways that we are called to live by these words of Jesus. It's challenging, but that's the whole idea 
just as the cross was challenging for Jesus. So we ask that the Lord will bless us with his mercies. Lord Jesus, you pardon all our iniquities. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you redeem our lives from destruction. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen, Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that pondering always spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading, oh, oh, a reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, be holy for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, no. 
second reading is from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person, for the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool, so as to become wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolish in the eyes of God, for it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses, and again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are in vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everyone belongs to you, Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belong to you, and you to Christ, and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, Hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what recompense will you have? 
Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we're just going to take a few minutes to wrap up this year's annual Catholic Appeal. For those who haven't heard, this is the yearly appeal, a pledge to be fulfilled over the course of the coming year that all parishes participate in. Every parish in the Archdiocese has a goal, and ours was set at $56,000. That will go to the ongoing ministries of care for the poor, for the sick, for educating our children, and preparing ministers for the church in the future, among other things. So I'm happy to tell you that so far, our pledges stand at $49,000. Well done, well done. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah. So thank you to everyone who has uh, helped to make this incredible response possible. Once we meet the goal, all the excess funds come back to St. George. With that money, we hope to refurbish the Marian Shrine outside our Eucharistic Chapel and replace many overgrown and dead shrubbery around our campus. This will give honor to our Blessed Mother and beautify our grounds. It's all in the bulletin. So very quickly, if you haven't made your pledge, I invite you to do that now. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, I would like you to just get to that. And um, if you're not able to uh, finish it before uh, this homily is over and the, and the ushers uh, come by, uh, I would ask that you please do so. Uh, and then just hand it to myself or one of the ushers after Mass. Most important line on there is give St. George credit for this so that it will be contributed and added to that $49,000 we have done so far. So, I want to talk a little bit about today's Gospel because it's significant in a very deep way. It's one that's so familiar, most of us know the key lines, Turn the other cheek, love your neighbor. These are words Jesus gave us to help us take on a new attitude. He wanted to bring us a different way of looking at the world and at other people. So the gospel today may be very familiar. It is also one of the most problematic. In our regular, ordinary lives, most of us find those very difficult words to live by because they are difficult words to live by. Loving your neighbor isn't always easy, especially if they don't fit into your concept of what kind of neighbor you want. People have told me turning the other cheek is a nice thought, but it really doesn't work in the real world. So let's talk for a minute about the real world we live in. This is Black History Month. And some people would say, why should we have Black History Month? Why should we honor them. Maybe because blacks in America have been so dishonored for so long. An appreciation for the contribution of the black community in our country is slow in coming, and it's more than just music and style. Slaves built the White House. They also built our country. Every group that came to the United States started oppressed and humiliated. I was in Mexico recently and the priest celebrating mass talked about the problem at our northern border. <laughs> the problem at Mexico's border. Working with desperate people is everyone's problem and responsibility. Our ancestors were not welcomed. Now we do not welcome others, most often based on the color of their skin. My favorite local philosopher was a man from St. Emmerich, a neighbor, our neighbor to the east. His name was Clarence Smithson. Clarence once said, the sin of racism is telling God he made someone wrong. Who can say that? Who would dare say that? Well, an awful lot of us do. Loving our neighbor is not always easy. 
Sometimes our neighbor isn't so lovable, but makes us so sure that we are so lovable. I do not know what the answer is to racism, but listening to Jesus is a good starting place. And listening to our neighbor is helpful, I think. This week, we heard of at least three mass shootings in the United States. Three. A mass shooting is when three or more people are shot and killed. Gee, that may not sound like much until it's you or someone you love. Then it becomes a big deal because it is a big deal. It's always a big deal. Since January 1st, there have been at least 70 mass shootings in America. 70. Yet it is almost impossible to get a law and act banning the very weapons most responsible for these crimes against humanity and against God. The old saw, if guns are outlawed, only outlaws will have guns, just doesn't cut it anymore. Does anyone really need an, RA, uh, an AR-17 to defend themselves, really? And if somebody needs one to go rabbit hunting, they better get a new hobby. Turning the other cheek does not mean we can't defend ourselves, but it does mean we shouldn't arm aggressors or give opportunity to people suffering from mental illness. And closely related to guns is abortion. That may sound a little confusing, but it really isn't. Abortion and guns are the two things invented with only one purpose, and that's to end a life. That's the only reason for either one of those. Our governor says he wants to make Illinois the most abortion-friendly state in the union. On the other hand, he recently said he wants to make our state number one in children's health care. How does he not see the disconnect there? How do you not see the disconnect? To all these, the politics beyond them is beyond me. But you know, that's not our realm. That's not our realm. Our realm is morality and the call that Jesus gives us. So long ago he said, you've heard an eye for an eye. What I say is, we can do better. He said, you've heard, hate your enemy. I say, don't hate, create. Because when you create something beautiful, it can only be done in love. That's the way of Jesus. That's what he says to us. Lent begins on Wednesday. We will receive ashes to remind us of the old hates and jealousies and pettiness of the past that burns within us, that give no heat or no light just a residue of ash. But the ashes on our forehead are not forever, and all those old burdens can be transformed into life-giving faith that makes us truly disciples of Jesus Christ. we stand together and we profess that which we most deeply believe. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. St. Paul reminds us that each of us is a temple of God, that God dwells within every person we encounter. So we ask now that the Lord will bless us for the times that perhaps we have failed, but strengthen us so that we can be stronger for the road ahead. For the church, that her teaching and sacraments will be a rich source of mercy for those lost in sin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who rule and govern, that they will embrace the gospel of life and the splendor of truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that we may take Jesus' words to heart, responding to sin with mercy, hurt with charity, and hatred with love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the hurt that others have caused, that they may find the courage to accept the challenge to forgive and reconcile with those who have wronged them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace this week to forgive our enemies and to pray for reconciliation and peace in difficult or troubled relationships. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Fulfill your promise to those who are, who are already asleep in your peace and grant them a blessed resurrection. We remember Janice Farner, James J. Malone, and Pasita Cruz. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of all goodness and tenderness, we give you thanks and praise for all of creation. We give you thanks and praise all the people that you have brought into our lives. Help us, Lord, to appreciate everyone. Help us to appreciate the gift of faith and to recognize the goodness in every person. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 664 in your books, Loving and Forgiving, number 664. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be found acceptable to God, our loving Father. And the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Amen. O Lord, as we celebrate your mysteries with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask you 
that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your spirit, you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O oh Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks for the, with the choirs of angels, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. <clears throat> Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we beg you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill, when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, Jesus took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, Jesus took the chalice of blessing in his hands. Confessing your mercy, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, Blaise our Bishop, with priests, deacons, religious men and women, seminarians, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles, St. George, and all the saints, 
with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. together as God's family by our brother Jesus, we pray as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, yours now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and you say to each of us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite those who are out in the parking lot to please turn on your flashers so that our ministers can find you more easily.
Please join in our communion hymn, hymn number 383, the servant song, number 383 in your books. Lord, 
Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, just a, a few final words. If you, if you haven't done your uh, annual Catholic Appeal pledge, you can give those uh, to one of the ushers right after Mass. We remind everyone, of course, uh, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, so please come and get your ashes. As you leave, we've got all kinds of free stuff for you. We've got a, a rice bowl from uh, uh, Catholic Relief Services. We've got the little black books for Lenten reflection, and so please be sure to take one of those. Also, um, we want to thank, uh, in a very special way, Brian Kozlowski. This is his last weekend helping out here at St. George, and we're so grateful. <laughs> Brian drives from the north side and comes down here to be with us, and he does that twice a weekend, and he's been doing it for months, and so we're so grateful. And so then next weekend, uh, actually Ash Wednesday, so if you want a preview, come Ash Wednesday, and you'll meet our new music director, Tim Quistorf. I think you'll really enjoy him. He's got a fabulous voice, and I'm looking forward to him rebuilding our music ministry and really getting us up and going. So, a lot of exciting and good things happening. Thank you because it's happening because of you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The Mass has ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in our uh, sending forth hymn, Word of Our God, number 609 in your books, number 609. Forth as salt of the earth, burn in our hearts as a lamp for our feet. Send us forth to shine as light for the world. Word at the dawn of creation to bless the beginning of time. Speak to our hearts of justice and truth. Teach us the mysteries of heaven. Word of our God, spirit in time, send us forth as salt of the earth. Burn in our hearts as a lamp for our feet. Send us forth to shine as light for the world. 
in the womb of a virgin to make what is human divine. Speak to our hearts of mercy and peace. Teach us the mystery of heaven. Word of our God, Savior in time, send us forth the salt of the earth. Burn in our hearts as a lamp for our feet. Lead us forth to shine as light for the world.